thanks for watching on a Thursday. On Thursdays, we like to empty out the film watching notebook from the previous week. I'll show you a bunch of plays, a bunch of stuff, some guys you might be interested in going forward for your fantasy football squad. I thought we would start, though, with Aaron Jones. I kind of wanted to show you Jones anyway, and then Ty Montgomery gets himself banished, er, traded to Baltimore, essentially banished for a bad kickoff return in a key spot. And now in the Packer backfield, we're down to two guys. We're down to Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams. Let's take a look. If there's reason for hope that things are finally tilting Jones's way, it would be last week's game against Los Angeles. And that's the game I'm gonna show you some film from in a moment. It started out frustrating. Jones got the start, but in the second series, it was all Williams. And then Jones got a series and Montgomery got a series. But in the second half, it was definitely more Jones for the first time all year. Remember, he was suspended for the season's first two games. And now that Montgomery's gone, well, I'm not sure who the candidate is to catch the ball in Green Bay, but the pie now gets sliced up two ways instead of three. This was the first play of the game in week eight, and what Jones does here at the defense's first level, you know, it's a crease. He runs through it. But when he advances upfield and the safety gets a beat on him, he almost completely escapes. That's some legit burst. And that's Aaron Jones's calling card. He's not tiny. He's 208 pounds. He plays with some authority. But he's also not a banger like Williams. He is obviously the more dynamic back, though. North-South acceleration. If you've been looking for an online sports book where you could play the games, I play at BetDSI.com. If you go there and use our promo code, HarrisTube, they will match your deposit up to $500. I've been playing there for a few years. They've been around for about 20 years. And I frankly don't think you last 20 years in the online sports book business if you're not very reputable with really good customer service and a website that works. That's been my experience, so about to talk about my picks later in the show. If you've been looking for a place where you can make some picks and have some rooting interests on games you're going to be watching anyway, check out BetDSI.com and use that promo code HarrisTube. Okay, back at it with Aaron Jones, and I'll say, 43 of the 86 rush yards from last week happened in the first quarter as the Rams were, frankly, getting drilled off the line. A lot of just running straight forward into air. But I show you this play... I think especially from the side, again, I think you just see a different kind of acceleration than you see with Jamal Williams. So we've watched this play, and I'm going to compare it to one from Williams. Different game. I mean, it's not a perfectly fair comparison. It's not the exact same play. It's never an exact one-to-one -one comparison. But here are the linebackers closing in on him don't really have any problem anticipating where he's going to be. You know, he's not sloth-like. He's not impossible. He's not a bad player, frankly, but he's not surprising anyone with burst. By contrast, this is an enormous hole to run through, but I would argue you can watch number 43 again here. That's John Johnson. I would argue he is surprised by this. I don't think Jones exactly puts his foot in the ground and jukes Johnson out of his undergarments here. I think rather he sees Johnson coming, Jones does, and chooses a different path and gets on that path faster than Johnson can account for, and he's gone. One-on-one, -on -one, he's surprising a defender with speed, with really with acceleration, and he's gone. Now, being on the smaller side of average, if not as small as the boutique backs who've had success, your Britas, your Lindsays, well, it has its disadvantages. This is a safety. It's probably a bad call, first and foremost. This is pure eight-in-the-box stuff. I think you need to audible out of this call. Hard to make any progress there, but let's also be honest. Jones doesn't really stand a chance when a defensive lineman gets in a good hit. Against New England on Sunday night, I can't promise you how they're going to deploy these guys. Mike McCarthy is his own man, and he certainly makes his own decisions, and I don't always agree with all of them. I thought the tide turned usage-wise a little bit in that second half last week, and I also think Ty Montgomery being gone just maybe clears up some of the trash, clears up some of the, the empty snaps that neither guy was getting. I have Aaron Jones number 20 among running backs for week nine. I have Jamal Williams number 34. I don't think Williams is terrible. He might be a better bet to score a short touchdown. He is a thicker back. He is tends to have a little bit more power when he runs, but... 
I think Jones is the one you want to start, but I admit, you know, we could be right back here next week reconvening once we see the usage against New England. All right, let's check out my picks against the point spread for week nine. I should say here that Thursday night, this pick is if the possum C.J. Beathard is playing. Otherwise, it's pretty much hands off. But yeah, okay, last week, not the best, five and six. Super contest, I was two and three. Uh, people are talking about week nine as though it's a quite a difficult week to find value. I guess I think that means I'm the sucker. I have a few spreads I think are off. I think the Rams should be favored going to New Orleans. So I guess I'll take the points and, and feel dumb. I guess, we'll see. I like the Vikings much bigger over the Lions. The Monday night game, I think Tennessee's offense is pretty close to garbage, but I am not sold one bit that Amari Cooper makes the Cowboys offense that much better. I think they're pretty similar teams, probably an ugly offensive game, so I'll take nearly a touchdown. And of course, you've got the option to tease it up to seven if you so choose. Okay, and then finally, to wrap up the week, let's show you a countdown. A few things that are fantasy relevant, maybe maybe one or two things that are goofy in our countdown from five through one of film stuff out of my notebook that I noticed. This was a much ballyhooed touchdown for Tariq Cohen off a screen, and it winds up making Mitch Trubisky's day look good. And listen, having a human joystick like Cohen is part of the equation. If he gets open in the open field, like he's going to make some plays, and that counts. But I want to particularly look at the anatomy of what happens here. If we go back to the beginning of the play, this is a seven-man blitz. We are coming after the quarterback here. I particularly want you to pay attention to number 54 here, Avery Williamson, because his responsibility is the man in the backfield there, Tariq Cohen. If Cohen stays in to pass protect, good, go rush the quarterback, hit somebody. But if he doesn't, you gotta cover him. And as we run it, that is a real bad decision. And you can see he knows it. You don't see running backs completely uncovered like that too often. Certainly not dudes who can run like Cohen completely unaccounted for. I show you this by way of saying some big plays Cohen makes are replicable. This one, I don't know. I'm not going to be able to count on that blown of an assignment every week. At number four, let's look at a play from Carrion Johnson, my friend and YouTube colleague. Brett Coleman is convinced that Johnson is ready to be Alvin Kamara. I am not there, but for sheer strength, get off me. That's an open field one-on-one -on -one tackle for number 28, Justin Coleman. Seems like I wind up finding a lot of film on which Justin Coleman gets victimized. Here's another one. Johnson isn't huge, but he ain't small, and he is strong. Maybe you've already seen this catch. Figured maybe it was buried because the Giants are such a mess, but Odell Beckham will do this, right? Victimizing another regular Harris football culprit. Poor Washington rookie Greg Stroman, who interferes with him, pretty obviously. But getting yanked to the ground nearly with one arm, ODB still makes the grab. And just as an addendum, number three, the flip side, how far has Evan Ingram fallen? This is fourth and three. It's only 10-3 Washington, fourth quarter. Convert this, you're in it. And that's just impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. How? How? And the injustice of it all is that Engram scored a meaningless touchdown with 10 seconds left in the game to make his day look respectable. It was not. At number two, I just want to show you how impossibly undisciplined Tampa Bay's defense is. This is the march of the offsides. It's high! Trail 7 nothing. start of the second quarter. Here comes a flag. Looks like a free play for Dalton down the sideline. If you think about those tight ends being healthy, and you could roll both of those personnel groups, a very good offense. And he's killing them on the hard kick. Yep, another jump by the Buccaneers. The flag down. Laney! It's hot! A third down and 10. Here comes a flag. Looks like the Bucs jumped again. Set! There's a flag down and passes. And let's wrap it up with this run from Nick Chubb on Sunday. Clear feature back now. That little move there in the backfield to avoid initial contact. That's fine. I think the giddy up to get to the outside, it's it's really sort of the giddy up that I'm impressed with as he curves it upfield. I mean, that's a 227-pound man. That's pretty good. 
I've been saying that to this point, Nick Chubb, to me, looks a little bit like Carlos Hyde. I think mostly that's been fair. He hasn't really super popped quite yet, but that kind of play that I just showed you, I think that might be a little bit outside Carlos Hyde's ability, that acceleration at that size. I own Nick Chubb in just about every fantasy league that I'm in, so I'm certainly hoping for a big half. The workload should be there, and I think the talent is pretty darn good. Thank you for watching us today and for this week. Uh, we hope you'll subscribe. If you do, click on the little bell. That way you'll get a notification by YouTube every time we post a new video. It really does help. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please smash that like button. Write a comment. Tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on. And of course, best of all, please subscribe to our channel and then click that little bell above the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we post a new video.